December 1901, chemist and doctor Harvey Washington Wiley had been on a public crusade for nearly 20 years. His goal was to prove to the citizens of the US they were being secretly poisoned by chemical preservatives by food companies and manufacturers around the nation. When he came upon an original approach to prove this, testing the effects of poisoned foods on human subjects, his results would shock millions of people and would be one of the main driving factors to breaking the barriers of food safety for Americans back then and even for us today. On the 18th of October, 1844, in a small barn in Kent, Indiana, Harvey Washington Wiley was born to parents Preston Pritchard Wiley and Lucinda Ware Maxwell. Harvey Wiley grew up on a farm, living around pure foods and substances, and only eating what was grown. Fast forward to the end of the Civil War, the US was booming with technological innovation, and it now found itself in a second industrial revolution. Factory work rose, and the amount of family-owned farms that once massively populated the country began to slowly decrease in numbers, being replaced with chains of factories. After returning from the Civil War, Wiley earned his undergraduate medical degree from Indiana Medical College and his Bachelor of Science from Harvard. Now appointed as the head chemist of the state of Indiana, Wiley received his first major assignment, in which he was to analyze the chemical composition of honey in Indiana and a few of the surrounding states. After several months of studying, he concluded that more than 85% of all honey in the United States was fake, mainly consisting of thickened glucose or corn syrup to make the substances seem like honey. A year after the conclusion of his study, Harvey was appointed chief chemist of the United States Department of Agriculture. Towards the beginning of the Spanish-American War, General Theodore Roosevelt began to notice that soldiers refused to eat their rations, and those who did experienced reoccurring symptoms of stomach pain and vomiting. The cause? Their canned beef was slimy, stringy, and covered in harmful materials materials like borax and loads of salt to keep it from rotting. In response, the army reluctantly casted an official investigation and reported that they saw no problems in the beef that they had given their soldiers. When Wiley did his own investigation, he discovered that the soldiers of the US Army had been supplied with the lowest quality beef. Now knowing that their meat had been contaminated, it brought up the question, what else is in our food? What citizens of the US had not known was that nearly all their food was contaminated or made up of a cheap alternative. Meats were made from a pulverized mass of meat scraps swept off the floor along with rat pieces and mixed with borax to keep it from rotting. Milk was watered down and contained a hefty scoop of formaldehyde to keep it from spoiling. It was also mixed with chalk for tint and, to mimic a lovely layer of cream on top, just a little squirt of pureed cow brains. In some instances, there were even parasitic worms at the bottom of glasses of milk. The cost for these adulterations? human lives. These substances were later linked to the tragic deaths of many infants and toddlers who suffered from scarlet fever and from other sicknesses due to the bacteria laden milk. The milk was coined embalmed milk by the press due to the fact that formaldehyde was used for preserving corpses. Medicine, made out of strong narcotics such as cyanide and morphine, could knock children out for several hours. No one gave much attention to these harmful substances, however, it didn't manage to make it past one man, American chemist Harvey Wiley. Wiley worked hard, studying the composition of many foods to spread public awareness about these crimes, but hardly anyone listened. Big companies despised him and scoffed him aside. After a decade of working, Wiley still hadn't convinced Congress to pass a food safety law. Wiley realized small study results wouldn't be enough for Congress, so he decided to take a plea to Congress and was appropriated $5,000, around $150,000 today, by Congress to test the effects of hazardous chemicals in foods on the human body. Wiley called this experiment the Hygienic Table Trials. Looking for volunteers, he searched for young, healthy men. Harvey agreed to give them $5 a day as well as a free meal three times every day for six months. However, the men had agreed to not sue the government or Dr. Wiley if they had been poisoned by the food. At the start of the test, each of the men were fed pure and natural food for one week. This helped Wiley and his crew to determine the proper serving size for each man. Soon after, the testing on borax began. The chef, William Carter, would serve each man regular food. However, the food was poisoned with borax. These meals consisted of common foods such as soup, roasted turkey, sweet and mashed potatoes, bread and butter, and sometimes they were even served dessert. Wiley began trying to figure out how much of these substances the human body could endure. The chemist analyzed everything that could hopefully tell them something. 
colors of the body fluids, changes in weight, internal temperature, body pulse, and anything else that could have potentially beneficial information. However, even though Harvey was originally targeting the government to make rules to regulate foods, he had quite an astounding idea. In order to at least have a chance at passing a bill in Congress, Wiley realized that his work needed to get into the center of the public eye and to share his beliefs about the crisis at hand. Towards the second year of his studies, news started leaking about these poison eaters. One of the first on the scene was journalist George Rothwell Brown. He began writing in secret about it. When all of a sudden, the news blew up. Wiley now saw the benefits of articles about the now dubbed Poison Squad. Dr. Wiley's Poison Squad was nationally famous, appearing in newspapers such as Puck, The Washington Star, The San Francisco Call, The Washington Post, and many others. Wiley also published his test results monthly so that everyone could know exactly what was going on. According to the tests, the results showed that eating borax and boric acid could cause potentially fatal internal damages. These results stirred up anger towards big food companies and gained the attention of writers and journalists, women from the women's suffrage movement and other women-led organizations, as well as mothers who wanted pure, safe food so that their children could go on living safe lives. The assistance of these politically outraged women helped Wiley to force Congress to take action. For the next five years, from after the June of 1903 to 1907, Wiley and his now bigger crew would begin to start experimenting on the effects of chemicals such as formaldehyde, sodium benzoate, benzoic acid, salicylic acid, sulfuric acid and sulfites, copper sulfate, and saltpeter. By the end of his studies, the test concluded that these chemicals caused stomach and intestinal pain, headaches, loss of appetite, and nausea. Unfortunately, in November of 1906, Robert Vance Freeman died of tuberculosis in Washington in his early 20s. The cause was directly associated with the consumption of borax, as he had been one of the first test subjects in the poison squad. Even with people beginning to threaten Wiley, he still continued to chase the government. Towards the end of his studies, Wiley had already proposed more than 100 different bills to Congress, and none were accepted. Wiley's morale was now at an all-time low. He had been persevering for food safety in the United States for more than 40% of his life and had nothing to show for it. And by now, he was getting desperate. Fortunately for him, in 1906, author Upton Sinclair published his book, The Jungle. Sinclair had spent that last year sneaking into the meatpacking industries, taking photos of what was going on and recording everything he saw in his journal. Though Sinclair had intended to expose the horrible conditions for low-class citizens, especially immigrants, the American public took to heart the gruesome truth about the Chicago meatpacking industries. Now, more than ever, the citizens of the U.S. were infuriated at the contents of what they had been eating. Once again, Wiley brought yet another bill into Congress. This time, however, Congress could not ignore the public outcry. And finally, in 1906, the Pure Food and Drugs Act was put into place. This act restricted the misbranding as well as the adulteration of food and drugs throughout the United States. The barrier of food safety had finally been broken. The Meat Inspection Act of 1906 was also passed a few months earlier. This is what ultimately pushed the Pure Food and Drugs Act into being passed. The Pure Food and Drugs Act also established the Food and Drug Administration, otherwise known as the FDA. With the help of other chemists, writers and journalists, the women's suffrage movement, and many others, Harvey Washington Wiley was able to finish his battle for food safety throughout the entirety of the U.S. All food processed in the U.S. now had to follow strict rules that would be enforced by the FDA. Even today, we can still see the positive effects of these two acts. We can eat foods and use medicine without having to fear that something potentially harmful or fatal could be inside of it. And it's all due to Dr. Harvey Washington Wiley testing food to figure out what chemicals are safe to the body and which should not be consumed. By the end of his experiments, four chemicals had been banned, formaldehyde, borax, boric acid, and salicylic acid. However, the importance and effects of Wiley's studies go even beyond this. What Wiley did didn't just make food safer. It established the precedent, the expectation amongst American citizens that their food should be safe. It is because of Wiley that we can trust that the foods we eat can all be safe.